Now, let's consider uh, this thing in, in another frame of reference. Let's say we are giving a train and inside, let's say, a train R, let's say this is now the mini car, whatever, a big one, and we are having a table here, and on the table, a ball or a body is there. Look, it's a friction this surface, and the ball is free to move on this one without any friction. And let's say this car is moving with a constant velocity, constant or uniform. When we look inside the car, then this object is at rest, right? It is at rest and the car itself is moving with a constant velocity. If I consider, uh, let's say, another reference, and let's say it's a tree here, it's a tree, and from the reference of the tree, the body is moving or not, the body is moving, right? because the ball is inside the train. So whatever is the velocity of the train, the ball is moving with the velocity. So according to this frame and this frame, okay, the observations are right. The law of inertia is holding. Look, according to this observer, there is no external agency on this body, on this ball. So it is at rest. And according to the tree, there is no external agency on this car and the ball is moving. Right? So in the absence of any external agency, in the absence of any external force, the ball is either at rest or the ball is moving with a constant speed and their observations are matching each other or their observations are matching the law of inertia because these both frames are inertial frames. The car frame and the frame which is the tree frame both are inertial frames. That's why the law of inertia is only there. Now let's say we <coughs> we now say that the we now change this one, the velocity. And when we change the velocity, then look here then what will happen? If for example V changes, V change either the speed or the direction of this car. In both the situation, acceleration will change and here A will become non equal to zero. So when a situation is this one, A non equal to zero, it means with respect to time, the V is not uniform, it is now changing. Now look what will happen to this situation. If for example, this reduces the speed, let's say brakes are applied, what will happen? This ball will move in this direction. Right? Then look at the situation from both the reference frames. What an observer who is inside this car, according to him, in the absence of any force, 
a body at rest will remain at rest. And now he sees that no one has applied any force on this valve, but it has start motion. So it means the law of inertia is not valid in this frame now. Because there is no force on this. The force is itself on the car, on the frame itself, right? But not on the ball here. The observer sees in the car that the ball has started motion. And that motion will be due to some force. And we see that there is no force. So such frames in which the law of inertia doesn't hold, we call them as non-inertial frames of reference. Now look to the same situation from the reference frame of the tree. What the tree is seeing? The tree is seeing that the train is moving, but now the train is applying braking and acceleration is produced there. And what the this one sees? This one sees that earlier the motion of this was a constant motion, but now it seems that someone has pushed it. An external agency has pushed it. But there is no external force on this one. And this one also sees that the law of inertia has been violated. There is no force on it and it speeds up. As per earlier motion, it was a constant motion, no problem. But we say here that a body in motion will continue its motion. And the same can be applied while accelerating it. When it will accelerate, then the ball will go in this direction. Right? What will be the train frame? What they will observe? What the train reference will say? That there is no external force on this one and it has started going in this direction mean the rest has been disturbed. When there is no force in the rest has been disturbed. So again now inertia is voiding. What this will see? Acceleration is there and it will see that the motion has been disturbed. What we said in the law of inertia, the motion will be disturbed only when there will be a force. And here is no force and this got disturbed. So it means the law of inertia is not holding in all frames of reference. Law of inertia holds only in inertial frames of reference. And that's why in the very first postulate we said that the laws of physics will remain the same in all inertial frames of reference. But what if the frame of reference is not inertial? The laws of physics will not be valid. The laws of physics will then be valid as well. But we will have to do some extra calculations. We will have to consider that frame is a reference. Uh, that frame is a non inertial frame. Clear? So, let's consider the. Uh, let's consider a space. Shadow. Space shadow is inertial frame or non inertial frame. Space shadow is also a non inertial frame. Why? Because the space shadow at every instant are we considered like a satellite. At every instant it, walk, it is falling to the earth, it's a free fall to the earth. But as you can see, it reaches the earth, then its speed is that much, and the curvature of the earth just move it around. 
and it is not, you can say, falling to the earth. So in each and every instant, the objects in the space shuttle are in a satellite, they are freely falling to the earth. And that's why the objects inside the space shuttle are hanging in midair. They are not falling to the bottom of it. Right? This is just like you who are having the free fall in an elevator. And the elevator is you want to touch the elevator, the elevator is going itself. And you are going behind it. So you will never touch the bottom. But you will both go the same. And now the end is not reaching, but it is warming, and that's why the objects are inside uh, the space shuttle are hanging in midair. So this is a non-inertial frame. For short I write for the inertial frames IF and for the non-inertial frames MIF. So let's come to the Earth. Is Earth in inertial frame of reference? Earth itself moves around the Sun. So the circular motion is in accelerated motion and the acceleration is always directed toward the center. Means at each and every instant the Earth feels that someone is attracting to me towards the center. It wants to reach the center, but its motion compels it to go around. And so Earth not only rotates, but Earth spins as well. And around 30,000 km per hour, it is rotating. And around 1,000 km per hour, it is spinning. So what about that one? Two accelerated motions. And that's why this is also a non-inertial frame. Like, you know, we know that the earth is not completely spherical, but like ellipsoidal type, a bit elongated on the ends. And we call here the equator. Now where the radius, where the radius of rotation is maximum. That radius of rotation is maximum in the equator. And here, where is the equator? Yes, where is the equator? This one or this one? Means the radius of equator is maximum. Means you are having the situation here. So if this is the elongated side, then you will be here. But it is it is rotating a 20 degree. So it is not exactly straight enough, but slightly tilted. And where you are experiencing means you experiencing like flinging off in the equator. Like our body, why our body means it is spinning. Why our body is stuck to it. We are not flinging away from it, which is called flinging off due to gravity. Gravity restricts us not to go away from it. Just like as you spin a muddy tire and the mud goes out of it tangentially. So this, according to that, we would have also gone from the earth like we should have cleaned up. But not due to gravity. And in the equator, we feel that the gravity has been reduced by approximately 3%, 0.3. So we feel some uh, 0.3, so it will be 30%, yes, 30% we see reduction in gravity. 
And that's why if you are running along the equator, like you are walking, you will feel that the gravity has been reduced. If you run, uh, even the normal walking and the way our breathing system is, so it will be just like the breathing will be like you are running when you are just walking in the region close to the equator. So you just like you are the herd beat is more there. It's like you are running, and it is uh, due to this thing. So Earth is a non-inertia frame. So where is the inertia frame? Where is the inertia frame? Do we have an inertia frame? But we are, we are testing the laws of physics. We are testing the laws of physics on this Earth. Where we found the law of inertia. The law of inertia we found on the Earth. Not the effect actually it matters. Means before Copernicus, before the 16th century, the people were of the opinion that Earth is not moving at all. It is stationary. And the Galileo, Galilei was poisoned due to his, you can say, the measurement or observation that Earth is not stationary. So it was Copernicus who told that Earth is moving. It's not stationary. But we feel, feel it is stationary. We observe the same law which tells us this everything, the law is telling. We observe it on Earth. It depends on the effect. If we consider, so this is I think 0 0.00006% means its speed is almost uniform. Only the change in the direction is causing acceleration. And the, you can say the circular path or the orbit which this Earth is following is so big that the effect means like it is 0.00006% non-inertia. So then we consider it that it is an inertial frame of reference. And on this we do all the measurement. Ideally, there is no inertial frame of reference. Maybe some other planets, huge stars, they will be more inertial compared to the Earth and so on. So this is um, something you will have to keep in mind. And the other thing is, like when it is rotating, we are having the epigenian and the perigenian effect. I am not going to discuss them, but from now on, we will keep the earth frame, or we will consider, we will keep considering the earth frame is an inertial frame of reference. And in the coming class, we will discuss uh, some relativistic things. So this was for all the reference frames, inertial frame of reference and non-inertial frames of reference. We will then discuss the what is the space and time, how the space is responsive to time, means it is not absolute as well. So all those things will be coming in the next lecture. Okay, thank you.